Today, we're going to talk about how to attack any user interaction with your Oculus Quest controllers, as well as make them vibrate whenever something happens within your game. So let's jump right in. Okay guys, so the first thing that we're going to do is to make sure to create a new project to configure it with your Oculus Quest as well as download the Oculus integration plugin. If you are good to go there, so let's just get started here. The first thing that we're going to do here is to rename. If you want, if you want to rename it, let's rename the, the Zing to Pull Trigger Gun. That's good. Now, the other thing that we're going to do is we need to find a weapon. And the one that I find is this, or that I found was low polygon pack. Uh, the way I found it is was by typing low poly or gun low poly. And as always, like to do, pick the free options. And this is gonna be the one from Duane's mind, if I think that I'm pronouncing it correctly. So make sure to get that one, download it. Once you do that, import it, and then you should be good to go. I'm not gonna import it because I already have it in my scene. Perfect. Now, what we're gonna create, we're just gonna create a quick environment in this in this case. And I want to create some kind of like a box slash room. So the first thing, we're gonna create a plane. And let's update the position of my camera. That was a weird position. Cool. This is the plane. Uh, let's set it up to zero, zero, zero. Good. Now the other thing, what we're gonna do is to create. We don't. We don't really need the main camera, by the way. Uh, so you might know. We're gonna use the player controller, or the OVR player controller. And we're gonna drag it and drop it into our scene. Uh, let's move it a little bit up here. Perfect. And then the other thing that we're gonna do is to let's change. Let's go to the OVR camera rig, and then let's just change tracking origin type to floor level. This is something that you should know by now if you have watched some of my previous videos. If you haven't. Well, I encourage you to watch some of my other videos when I explain a lot of different things about uh, how to use, for example, programming functionality or the setting up the Oculus Quest with the with Unity, etc. But anyway, so we just added our player controller. We got our plane. Now let's go ahead and make sure that we we have an actual room looking style um, environment. So let's create a cube here. Good. We got a cube. Let's change this and let's increase the width. Uh, I'm not gonna be or make it too perfect here. I'm just gonna pretend that that's gonna be all right for us at the moment. Good. And then let's increase a little bit more. Perfect. Good. And then the other thing that I want to do is to decrease the, there it is, perfect. Good. Now let's just move it all the way there to the end of the room. So it looks like an actual wall, perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the four walls of our room. So we have one. I copied and pasted all of them. Uh, you just have to drag it and move it to the other end of the of the plane. That's good. Now we gotta pick another one. Let's move it out of here. And the first thing we're gonna do is to change the rotation in the X axis. Actually, no, it's gonna be in the Y axis, my bad. Perfect. Night axis change the rotation and then let's just move it all the way till the end that should be plenty and then we have an extra one here and we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna change the rotation in the y-axis and we're gonna move it all the way until the other end that is missing let's move it here perfect cool so we have a little bit of a box room looking style 
The only thing that probably we're missing here, let's just adjust that. Uh, I know it's, it's not perfect, but once again, it's not gonna matter a lot, the visual of the outside, because we're gonna be inside the room. Now, the other thing that we're gonna do is to create some type of a roof here. Let's create a copy of these as well, and we're gonna change or rotate it under the X axis, and then let's increase, increase the size as well. Perfect, let's move it. Good. Now we have our room, it's pretty dark, you know, but at the moment, just to keep it simple, let's just gonna hide this. It's gonna hide the roof. Good. Now, remember that we downloaded our weapons. So you're gonna find this weapons pack low poly folder. And you're gonna find several weapons available for you. Uh, you can find the AK-47, Barrett M. 107 rocket shell i really have no idea of any of these uh, names of the weapons but i'm gonna pick this barrett m 107 it's the one that i kind of like want to work with today and we're we're gonna locate that weapon within our project is within one of our and anchors so let's go ahead and find the ovr player controller find the OVR player, uh, OVR camera rig, and then the tracking space, so you can find either the left or right hand controller. Uh, we're gonna, in this case, we're not gonna add any hands at all, we're just gonna set the default position of the gun, either in there, uh, either to track our right hand, or to try, track our left hand. Good. Good, so the first thing, we're going to drag it and drop it in here, in our right hand anchor, perfect. Make sure that the position is set to zero, zero and zero, that's good. And that should be good. So we have our environment set up, that's perfect. Uh, good, let's inspect this gun as well. So if we click on that and we take a look at the inspector, You'll find the animation, so it's got some animation already. And let's see how that works. If we click on play. Yep, look at it, it's actually shooting, which is kind of like all right, but at the same time, it's not all right. Yes, I do like the animation. The other part I don't like is the fact that it's just triggering by itself without actually uh, us pulling the, the Oculus Quest trigger. So what we're gonna do is to find the animation component and then find the play automatically uh, properly. And let's go and check that the checkbox. And that should fix the issue. Uh, let's click one, once again, play and good. Now, just to make sure that this is actually in the right position, whatever we move, just, just go ahead and just build this project uh, into your Oculus Quest. Just to make sure that it's following everywhere um, the gun is following everywhere where you go basically and uh, let's gonna click on build pull trigger gun i had already built it so <clears throat> let's just try this on and see what's the final output okay guys this was the final output whenever we deployed or we build it into our oculus quest Basically, my gun is following whatever I am moving as well as it's following the position or orientation of my right hand. So that part is good. We can go back and work on our project. Perfect. So we got our environment set up. Now, the other thing that we need to do is to animate this, this, this gun. So in order to do it, we need to detect uh, any changes in the pool. Whenever the, the, the user pulls a trigger within the Oculus Quest controllers. And once we detect those changes or that action by itself, we're going to activate the animation. Therefore, we're going to show like we're actually um, shooting the gun. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder called 
Let's create it and let's go and call it scripts. Good. Now let's gonna create a script, C sharp script. And let's gonna call it shoot gun. Good. Once you do so, we're gonna open our shoot gun script and you're gonna see. See, let me drag and drop it here. Good. So we're gonna open our shotgun script. And if you're not familiar with this or coding at all, I'm just gonna say a little bit of all the concepts here and there uh, if you're not very familiar. If you are very familiar with that, this should be a little bit of uh, something that you should know already. So you should find uh, the star function and an update function. And this is a class um, as well. This is what is going to contain all the properties and functions that are going to allow it to activate certain functionality within your game, uh, within your virtual reality game. Uh, in order to, the first thing that we need to do is to find what's, what is it that we want to do. What we, what we want to do in this case is to pull the trigger, right? In order to activate the animation. So what we're gonna do, what we're gonna need is to have this gun. That's the first thing. And once we have the gun, we need to find the animation. Once we find the animation, we need to find the play option. It's not gonna play automatically, but there's an option called play so we could enable the the animation if we go back to our script the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new variable and let's gonna call it it's gonna be a game object and that's gonna be our gun that's the first thing second thing as well we're gonna create another variable it could be public as well in fact let's leave it as private and we're gonna call it animation and this is gonna be the gun animation. Good. Now, what we need to do is to, whenever we pass on the gun object, we need to find the gun, the animation of the gun so we could apply it to the gun animation. So, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna set gun animation is equal to the gun and what we're gonna find is the animation component of the gun and just with that we will have our animation remember that each one of these sections within any game object is a component and in this case this component is called animation just to keep it simple for those who don't are not very familiar with the concepts. Good. And in order to detect, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna detect if we can activate that animation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the OVR input. The OVR input will allow us to detect any kind of changes or you know, interaction that the user has done with the Oculus Quest controllers. So we're gonna put that little piece of code, code within the update function. And for that, we're gonna create an if statement. Within your if statement, we're gonna call the OVR input. And then we're gonna find the get method. And within your get method, what we're gonna find is like, hey, I wanna detect a specific kind of button or trigger that the Oculus Quest has. Now, let me show you a little bit of what are the input names available so you could use them within your script. Okay, so if you would like to see what are the inputs available, what you could do is just Google it, Oculus Quest Input Unity. And make sure you find the OVR input Oculus Quest Developer Center under the developer.oculus.com. Let's click on that option. And over here, you'll find a lot of documentation, pretty helpful documentation uh, that you will be able to use. 
but at the moment, we're just gonna keep scrolling down. I'm gonna keep scrolling down. And let's go all the way here. Perfect. This is an illustration of what the controllers look like. And over here, they will show you what are the different names for each of the buttons and trigger than that the Oculus Quest controllers have. So it's gonna be something like, for example, the left controller is gonna be called Axis 1D Primary Index Trigger. The other trigger is gonna be called Axis 1D dot primary hand trigger so it's just for you to get familiarized with those uh, the names that are assigned to those controllers in our case we're gonna activate the trigger the secondary trigger of the right controller so this is the one that we're gonna need axis 1d secondary index trigger perfect so let's move this a little bit out of here and then we're trying to attack that particular trigger so we're gonna use OVR input and I need you to detect the one that is in the axis 1D and I want to detect the secondary index trigger now something that I forgot to mention is that this get OVR input get changes the is gonna attack any particular value based on the the button provided so let's go back into our documentation and let's take a look at some of the examples that they show here within the example usage they are showing us how they use different methods uh, primarily the get method um, based on the buttons are push or pull uh, is gonna return a different value for example if you push uh, the bottom one which is the button a in the oculus quest controller it's gonna return return a value of true uh, returns true if the x button was released that's the get up c one that works for the secondary index or something similar so for the secondary index we have an example in here it says returns a float of the secondary typically the right index finger triggers current state what well, this is range from 0.0, .0 to 1.0 what this means is whenever you pull the trigger you have a range based on the range you're gonna get value either from 0 to 1 it could be 0 0.1 0 0.6 0 0.9 1 or 0 it just depends on what the amount of uh, effort that you're pulling the trigger on it's gonna give you a specific value so you just picture it as just as a regular trigger if you just pull it all the way in well it's gonna be just all the way in but that's just kind of like the way it works now that's kind of like how we're gonna do it in our example or in our script so if we take changes in here i would like it to be make sure that whenever there are changes and trigger and the user has gone past the 60 percent range uh, i would like to detect activate some functionality and I would like to do after 60% of the trigger as well now for demo in purposes this is not gonna apply for the for the oculus quest controller but for demo demos purposes uh, we're gonna use also the input uh, get key and with that one we're gonna find the key code let's say y key so for that one it's just a way for me to detect any changes as well within your computer using the keyboard now once we have that what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the gun animation and within your gun animation we're gonna find a function that is called the play function make sure to include it and what that's gonna allow us to do is to activate the gun animation good so we're gonna save this at the moment we're gonna go back to our project and then what we're gonna do is oh 
we don't want to upgrade. What we're gonna do is to create an empty object. And once we create an empty object, let's call it input manager instead. And then let's find that script go call shoot gun. Let's drag it and drop it within our input manager. Good. Now, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the gun within our project and we're going to drag it and drop it within our input manager. Actually, no, within our gun section or our gun property from this shoot gun script that we just created. Good. So let's just save. Let's just try playing. Seeing if this is working, since I don't have the Oculus Quest controller at the moment, I'm just going to use the Y. Yep, I press the Y and it's playing, but it keeps playing that animation. I want to stop that animation from happening, so let's just fix it. We're going to go to the start function and below the gun animation, uh, where we define the gun animation, we're going to find the clip property of the gun animation and then we're gonna find the wrap mode the wrap mode and we're gonna change the wrap mode to once basically what this says is it's gonna run the clip or the animation clip either loop which means constantly uh, the default should be a loop if I'm not wrong uh, once it's just it's just gonna trigger once whenever it's you activate the, the play or you activate the animation and you have all other wrap modes available you can play with it uh, but at the moment we just need the ones option good let's just save this let's save the script let's go back to our project and let's try again let's gonna hit key yep it's correctly stopping here yep that's perfect that should be good and since we know that that should activate our trigger on the oculus quest controller let's just build it right away and look at it guys i'm pulling the trigger at the moment and it's working perfectly perfect now we know how to detect any changes from the Oculus Quest controllers and how to add on a little bit more a functionality in this case animate a specific animation to make that okay guys this is the result um, as I pull the trigger of my RAN hand controller is activating the, the animation so that's great that's perfect we just learned how to attack any kind of changes or any kind of user interaction within the oculus quest controllers and how to add or improve the experience of the user within your virtual world that's the first part now i know that usually whenever you shoot the gun it's usually gonna bounce and it's gonna create some type of vibration or something i've never shot the gun by the way that's kind of like what i've understand but in that case we're gonna add a little bit of vibration to the right hand controller whenever we pull the trigger and activate that shooting animation effect as well so let's just go back into our project okay guys now we're gonna enable vibration to the oculus controllers before they used to have the ovr haptics to enable this functionality but now it's, it was changed and it was integrated within the ovr input to add vibration to the controllers if you would like to find more information about that just simply go to let's see just type ovr input or you can just do oculus quest input not input unity and let's type haptics which is the term used to detect any any changes or any interaction when with the user touching uh, controllers so you're gonna find this oculus uh, unity haptics sorry and you will find the documentation they explain the proper function which is called set controller vibration that activates the vibration within a specific controller 
In fact, they give us a little bit of an example. I'm pretty sure we could use this straight into our project. Just gonna copy it and just remove this from here. And let's go back into our script, our shootgun script. And when do I want this to happen? I want this to happen whenever I pull the trigger. When do we attack the trigger? We detect trigger here. And in fact, I'm gonna add a comment, check if trigger, right, controller trigger is pull at 60%. Cool. Whenever we pull the trigger, we're gonna play the animation. Now, we can simply just copy it and paste it in there. That extra script that we found in the documentation and oh my god <laughs> i probably have it in spanish yep i can change it to english perfect so you can always find uh, more information in the documentation but if you want to go and take a look at what's going on or what you need to provide you could just simply take a look at the the intelligence of the of this method and you will find out that there's a frequency for the first parameter the amplitude and as well as the controller mask the frequency is gonna be the amount of time that is gonna be vibrating and it's gonna be from zero to one let's just call it from zero to i don't know let's say five float and in here it's gonna be the amplitude um it's pretty much how, how how strong is gonna be the vibration within the controller. It's gonna be from zero to one as well. So let's set it to 0 0.8. And you can always play around with these, these values as long as it's between one, uh, between zero and one. And then we need to set the controller, which controller is gonna activate or vibrate. It's gonna be whether the right or left controller. So in here, you can find it using the OVR input controller. You're gonna find the R touch, and there's also an L touch, R for right, L for left controller. So this is just perfect as it is. We can just save this. Let's go back to our project, and then let's just build this one more time. Okay guys, this is a little bit weird because you cannot actually <laughs> show it in a video, you just have to experience it, but as I'm pulling the trigger, the right controller is vibrating uh, every time I pull the trigger. So sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it just, uh, it takes longer to the vibration to finish, uh, the to vibrate, I pull the trigger once, for example, in this scenario, it's already still vibrating. So you could adjust that uh, by just changing the amplitude and longitude that we define within the script. Okay, guys, we're able to detect changes in the controller as well as include or enable vibration. Now, this is just gonna be a bonus point. It's not gonna be related to VR, but just to make it more realistic, your environment. So the first thing we're gonna do is to find the directional light and drag it and drop it within your gun. We're gonna change the position. Uh, zero, 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 that's good. Rotation, let's set it to zero as well. Perfect. Now we have a different effect. Now, the way I want it to look like is like if somebody using the gun and using this gun little lamp it's kind of like focusing on that specific uh, particular point. So in order to do so, make sure you're still under the directional light, which is not gonna be called directional light. Let's just keep it as gun light. And let's change the type from directional to spot. Good. Now if you notice we're seeing the shape the shadow of the <laughs> same gun so which means that we need to move the light where the actual light comes 
And I don't know if that's actually what where the light comes. I think that's where you could actually see uh, more accurately the your target. But I'm looking at it as a light. So let's go ahead and let's keep it like that. Good. We don't have any shade there, do we? Mm, let's increase a little bit higher. Good. We got this. Got the focus point. See the range. Let's see then change a little bit the color to a little bit of whitish color. Make sure to change the color of the as well of the of the walls so it's dark. And you can always play with the intensity as well. Continue to two. So change the range to 20. Okay, we got the light, good, and then let's just add back into our project the uh, roof. Good, and let's build this and let's see how that turns out. Okay guys, this was the final output of our environment. The tweaks that we make to this light to make it spotted based on the position and orientation of the gun. And now we just make it more realistic for the user into our virtual reality world. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was pretty helpful for you. If you like what you saw, please leave me a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel if you would like to be up to date with more content about XR development. See you until the next time.